So I got this truck out back. It's is it raining out there? Where is it? Cylinder head. That thing right there. That's off of a uh, the 2007 or 2008 six seven uh, Dodge. Um, So this guy, uh, he had me do some work on one of his trucks a couple years ago, and he had this truck and another shop local. I won't. I'm not going to name any names in case anybody's local. I'm not. I'm not that type of person. I don't want to go. Um, anyway, so he took the. Let's see how many times I can shake this camera around for you. Um, so he he took it to another shop local. Like, I think 2013, I want to say. He's had, I think he's had since 2013. So, yeah, it was 2013. He took it to another shop um, and had to do a bunch of work on it. And then, uh, and it's a uh, blue head gasket, which, as we all know, 6.7s are pretty famous for. Um, they make certain parts fall off of them if you catch my drift um so uh yeah so anyways so blue head gasket they did head gasket in it they put come to find out it's not even h&s tuning it's god only knows what tuning on it and i'm pretty sure it's got a lot of timing in it um and so it blew a head gasket. They put uh, AR 2000s in it the first to go around and uh, blew a head gasket. He talked to me about um, doing the head gasket this last time, um, probably two or three years ago. And, uh, um, and ended up taking it back to the other shop because um, so anyways, the Dodge, it, uh, I worked on his truck a few years ago, one of his other trucks a few years ago. He had a, I think it was like an 03 crew cab dually 5.9. Um, and it, I think I did injectors and a, and, yeah, injection pump in it. The same shop had worked on this truck. Um, and they, again, I'm really not trying to badmouth them, but they're making it really hard not to. The truck had almost 300,000 miles on it and it had a starting issue. Um, it, it just didn't want to start. It would crank, 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 and inevitably it would start, but it would take a little while for it to start. And uh, and sometimes it was better than others. Sometimes it would, you know, crank a little bit, you know, maybe five or six seconds and then it would start, um, you know, whatever. Anyway, so they thought the lift pump went bad. And so, mind you, it's a common rail 5.9, not a VP44. It's a common rail. And they thought the lift pump went bad. So they put a fast on it. And so charged this guy, you know, probably twelve, thirteen hundred dollars to put a fast on it. It didn't fix the issue. So the guy was pretty irritated about that. And when it showed up to my shop, um, it wouldn't even build fuel pressure without the engine running. Like low pressure, fuel pressure. The, the fast would not pick would not pick up fuel pressure until the engine was running. And I found that there was something wrong with the pickup in the tank. You know, the, those trucks they use the. Um, the factory pickup with the fast. So the fast line just hooks directly into the pickup. There was something wrong in the pickup in the tank. And so we ended up just putting a, a sump on the bottom of the tank and that fixed the, the pressure issue. Um, so anyway, so I, I wanted to get that fixed first and yada, 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 I need to shorten my story here because this video is literally like 25 minutes long. Anyway, so went through the process of diagnosing it and found out that it really just needed new injection parts. They were worn out. It is what it is. They wear out. Um, so we put new injectors, injection pump, all that crap in it. The truck ran amazing. It ran great. Um, he was tickled with it. You know, whatever. Um, so move on to this truck. He decided he was going to take it back to the original shop that did the head gasket the first time. Um, and uh, in hopes that they were going to, you know, help him with the bill. And then ended up charging him to do the entire job again. Um, and they put uh, a supposedly a new Cummins head on it uh, put a new Cummins head on it and did ARP 625s this time put it all back together and that was like 
15,000 miles ago, maybe, maybe 15,000, um, and it's got a blown head gasket, and he said that it's had a blown head gasket for like the last 10,000 miles, like it didn't last but maybe 5,000 miles, which uh, something's telling me that it didn't even last 5,000 miles. <laughs> So when he was talking to me about this thing, I'm like, yeah, you know, like, ARP 625s, because he's like, well, maybe the tuning's too hot. And I'm like, eh, no, can HS tuning is not too hot. Like, 625s, you should be able to make, like, eight, 900 horsepower without any kind of an issue. Well, that's that's a bit of a stretch. Like, that's a little bit of a stretch. But a, a, a tuned truck, you should be able to run the ever-living crap out of that truck if the head gasket was done right with 625s. You should be able to run the out of it and not have an issue. Um, and here this truck is and that's what he said is he said he runs the truck it's a g56 truck um and he says he runs the truck really hard he drives it like a race truck and i told him i said you should be able to do that um, so i tore it down and the it was very obvious that the head gasket was blown in between mind you i went and drove this truck I think this thing's shaking like crazy. Um, mind you, I went and drove this truck before I took it apart um, and put it in the performance tune or whatever. He said it didn't, it wouldn't pressurize or it wouldn't puke coolant out of it in the in the stock tune. So I put it in the performance tune and just went and drove it. And I kid you not, um, I got in the throttle for maybe. Five seconds, maybe total, 10 seconds, not even that hard, maybe half throttle, and it pushed cool, a lot of cool. Um, and so when we got the head off of it, I, it was very obvious on the head gasket that, oh, damn, almost got a bird. Um, the only cylinder that was not blown, they were, it was blown between all the, all the cylinders except for one and two. That was the only cylinder that was sealing. Um, and I believe, so basically all of the cylinders except for one and two were at least three thousandths out on flatness between the cylinders and uh, between five and six was five thousandths out um, and four and five was like four maybe four and a half thousandths out um, <clears throat> And the other ones were, they were closer to 4,000s than they were 3,000s. So, I mean, we're talking, this this thing is, there's a reason why this blew a head gasket. Like, there's no amount of ARP studs that are going to hold together something that's that far out on flatness. Um, mind you, this truck has 117,000 miles on it, so it's not like it's a high mileage truck. This was physical damage done by who did the head gasket. 100%, there's no question about it. It was done by whoever did the head gasket. My guess is use this as a lesson is that someone took one of those um like one of those red uh like 3m roll lock discs um and went to town on the cylinder or on the block um it was squeaky clean like cleaner than realistically like i mean we're talking there was no um, usually, you know, when you get a, get a, you know, even a hundred thousand dollar truck, you'll get like little erosion spots and stuff from, you know, just, you know, coolant sitting in there, you know, whatever. Um, there was none of that. It was, it was clean. Like there was no spots on it at all. And, uh, uh that seemed a little odd to me. Um, but I, so I'm pretty sure this guy went in there hell bent and took some material off. So that's really unfortunate for the guy who owns the truck. Well, because guess what he gets to do now? He gets to put an engine in his 117,000 mile truck that he's already spent like eight or $9,000 putting head gaskets and studs in by some other shop. And it just, yeah, oh God. It, if there's one thing that, if there's one thing that infuriates me is incompetent people that pretend to be competent, you know? And they continue to pretend to be competent and screw people out of their hard earned money. If you don't know how to do your job, go find something else to do that you know how to do. And you know, and then that's the hard part too, is, is when you have stuff like that happen, it makes the rest of us that actually know what we're doing, you know, it look bad. You know, you get people, I've had plenty of people over the years that like, you know, they really question what you tell them because, you know, you're, uh, 
you know, they've been screwed over or, you know, whatever, you know, um, you know, and so it makes it hard for the rest of us, you know, because, you know, we have to kind of, you know, play the game and, you know, and, you know, make sure these people feel extra, extra, extra comfortable with what we're doing, you know, so that way they don't feel like they're getting screwed because I have never, I've been in business for four years. I have never once screwed anybody over, not out of a penny, not out of a dime, not out of a nothing. Man, screwed nobody over. Uh, you know, but unfortunately, there's people out there who it doesn't it doesn't phase them to screw people over. It doesn't matter to them if if they charge someone a little bit extra or they don't do a good job. You know, it's as long as the as long as the money's coming through the door and it continues to come through the door, that's all they care about. Which to me, that doesn't you know. I mean, yeah, obviously you got to have the money coming through the door. That's a no brainer. Like you can't can't do everything for free, you know, but you also got to be a decent human being and at the same time. So. Anyways, guys, well, that was all I had to update you with. Um, I'm not sure where or what I'm is going to be next, but uh, we'll figure that out. Have a good one.